Okay, so we are starting the fourth video lecture. This is for density. Um, so when we talk about density, we have to think back, what do we remember about density? In class, we had a question at the end of our volume um, practice questions that said, you know, hey, I've already displaced the water with these three different stones. The girl's name was Wendy. Um, and, you know, she did some work and found the density of one of those stones was a certain grams per centimeter cubed. Um, what were th some things that she measured to get to um, that value? And we said, hey, she had to figure out what the mass was and the volume was. So those come into play with density. So density is how closely packed particles are within a substance, okay? So some pictures... Um, that I drew for you to look at. Look at the particles in a solid, how close they are together, okay? Compared to the particles in a liquid, they're still pretty close together, but they move past each other. And then the particles within a gas, they're just all over the place, spread really far apart, bouncing off of the walls of the container, okay? If we looked at three, these three samples, we would say that the solid is more dense than the liquid, which is more dense than the gas. Why is that? because the particles in a solid are packed really closely together, okay? <clears throat> Tools that we would use to find the density of a substance, whatever we use to find mass and a volume. It could be a digital balance, a triple beam balance. We could use a graduated cylinder. We could use volumetric formulas, okay? Um, as long as we're solving for a mass and a volume, okay? So, again, balance, digital scale, graduated cylinder, water displacement, a ruler for those geometric formulas. Well, what is the actual formula for density? Density is equal to mass divided by volume, okay? Mass divided by volume. You can also see the Greek symbol of rho. Um, we like to call this rho the elephant because this resembles an elephant's ear and an elephant's trunk. Um, mass divided by volume. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, what are the units um, when we have an answer or we're solving to find the density of something? Um, we're looking at mass per volume. So mass per volume, mass per volume, mass per volume, mass per volume. Um, <clears throat> as long as you have a unit that specifies I have measured a mass and I have measured a volume, you're, you're on the right track. Um, I've broken these up into, these are typically what you would see in here um, if you're looking at the density of solids. Here, if you follow this path, I'm finding the density of liquids, okay? Something to remember, we've talked about this quite a few times. One milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. Um, or we can say this is also one cubic centimeter, okay? So let's think back to mass and volume. Two objects can have the same mass but different volumes, okay? They can have the same mass but different volumes, so we have to think to ourselves, will they have the same density? Will they have the same density? So I've done a little sample here. If they have the same mass, so you'll see that in black, but different volumes, will they have the same density? A lot of people will think, well, they're both, uh, if I put them in my hands, uh, they feel about the same in terms of how heavy they are, but their sizes are different, okay? Since this uh, 100 grams is in a larger space, those particles aren't packed as closely together, okay? So th that would be less dense than the 100 grams that's in only 100 milliliters. <clears throat> Always remember graduated cylinder water displacement. We do our final volume minus our initial volume. Um, we will do a lab that begins on Monday uh, where we're solving for the masses and volumes of different objects within our classroom. 
um, and that will lead us into some density problems within.